How often do you find a book which changes your entire life? Not very often, at least not when you've read as many books as myself, and yet this is a book which truly changed my understanding and practice of spirituality in a very real, very tangible, and ultimately far more healthy way of engaging with everything religious and everything faith-based. New Age Religion and Western Culture by Wouter Hanegraaff is without a doubt the single most important book in my library. My second read, which is the process when I sit down with the highlights from a book and type them out manually and go through my notes, is 25,000 words. I manually typed out 25,000 words of this book. It's 63 pages on a Google document. And I wrote in brackets the word video. 70 times I just checked before starting to film this. So how do I possibly make one single video on a book which is so important and is worth potentially at least 70 videos, an entire lecture series, in under 20 minutes? My invitation is simple. For this video, I want to introduce you to the idea, which isn't spoken about very often, that the New Age movement and the modern spiritual but not religious movement is nonetheless a religion. It's a faith-based structure which, through various conscious and unconscious means, can wrap us up in a belief structure which we may not realize that we're falling victim to. Sounds very dramatic, and I'm not trying to paint the New Age as a cult. I'm not trying to dismiss typical New Age beliefs as untrue or delusional, but I'm trying to invite in essence from this video and what you can expect from the next few minutes is to distill the impact that this book had on me at a very important moment in my journey. Because a book like this, which effectively does the job of many other books, but much better, a book like this, which explores the new age, and a book like this, which also academically explores the new age, and a book like the new age almanac, which captures all of the various phenomena such as crystals and channeling and Reiki and healing and quantum dynamics and everything new age. All of these books are kindergarten level compared to this book. It is honestly, I, I have such a crush on Wouter Hanegraaff because what he's done in this book is between 1990 and 1992, he went to the new age bookstores in Denmark, not Denmark, in Holland, um, he was in Holland and he went to the New Age bookstores and he read a hundred books, sampled the most popular books. He went and asked the check it, the checkout person which books are selling and he systematically went through the books. If you see any parallels to my approach, well, that's why I uh, like him so much and effectively summarized what is a complex and interwoven series of practices, beliefs, tenets, and general habits of identification for anyone who might be a hippie, a spiritualist, or someone who is otherwise spiritual, but not religious. And he documents it in meticulous detail. He breaks down play by play, decade by decade, and even tracing all the way back the history of something like an alternative esoteric Gnostic belief system back into the Middle Ages, up to the modern day roots in the counterculture of the 1960s and shows the evolution through various humanistic therapeutic threads and various spiritual new age threads to get to the point where we are today. And don't be fooled by the 1998 printing. Nothing has changed since this book was released. In fact, I would argue that this is the important time more than ever to read a book like this. Because if you don't challenge the belief system that you hold to be true, if you don't find a way to create the spaciousness between a powerful visionary experience or a synchronicity and that opening of rationality, that opening of questioning of, hmm, is this the full truth or have I gone slightly off the rails? That incremental going off the rails will become a feeling of ungroundedness which alienates you from consensus reality and stops you from having your feet on the earth and your heart involved with other people who don't understand your spiritual experiences. Wouter Hanegraaff provides you a roadmap in very practical,
proper academically rigorous terms, which really, as my experience testifies, creates a truly life altering perspective. This is about 500 pages of pure gold for someone who is at that advanced level of spirituality, has a level of interest in reading books and going deeper and challenging their belief systems. This is what we need to do. We need to get into the space where we can, I suppose, creatively speaking, kill our darlings. We need to be able to have, this is so paradoxical, I hope you follow, to have a simultaneous, full, yes, intuitive, gut knowing that an experience was real, such as a visionary experience, while also stepping into a perspective where we can question it as false, delusional, superficial, or otherwise lacking in information. This is the essence of the video in a single sentence. We need to challenge our belief system, because if we don't challenge our belief system, we will be victim to unconscious repetitions of other people's belief systems without truly forming a discerning, rational-minded, intuitively open way of experiencing ourself and God, for lack of a better phrase. But what is the New Age movement in a nutshell? It's a very complex phenomenon. As I said, 25,000 words in my second read, 70 video tags that I could make this video as only one of 70. I'm going to go in with the definition, and this is the proper definition of what the New Age movement is. There is so much highlight in this book. I'm going to read you the short definition of the New Age movement so we've clarified what we're talking about, and then the long, ultimate, end game definition of the spiritual but not religious and what's going on what's going on in the space today short quote from the book what is the new age movement the new age movement is characterized by a popular western culture criticism expressed in terms of secularized esotericism it's a countercultural movement Beginning with the 1960s and progressing through the 70s and 80s, and especially the rise of New Age consumerism in the mid-1980s, let alone what we're having today with things like Instagram spirituality, it is a form of countercultural rebellion against the everyday reality which has a feeling of hollowness, dullness, and lacking depth or superficiality, and we identify ourselves in contrast to that which seems stale and dull and grey. That is what's happening. That's okay, not judging it, but that's what's happening. The longer quote which expands on this, let me read it for you. This is the pure, academically correct of what's going on in the New Age movement. I'm so excited. I'm all over the place. I love this book. It's so worth the weeks that it takes to work through. Long quote about the New Age movement. Lend me your ear and I will slow down. New Age as secularized esotericism. All New Age religion is characterized by the fact that it expresses its criticism of modern Western culture by presenting alternatives derived from a secularized esotericism. Same again, right? It adopts from traditional esotericism an emphasis on the primacy of personal religious experience and on this worldly types of holism brackets as alternatives to dualism and reductionism. We'll break it down. But generally reinterprets esoteric tenets from secularized perspectives, since the new elements of causality, the study of religions, evolutionism, and psychology are fundamental components. New Age religion cannot be characterized as a return to pre Enlightenment worldviews, but is to be seen as a qualitatively new syncretism of esoteric and secular elements. See how academic this is, I love it. Paradoxically, New Age criticism of modern Western culture is expressed to a considerable extent on the premises of that same culture. That's enough word salad, I'm going to put the book down. It is very technically correct and each of those phrases needs unpacking in itself. My invitation to break all that down into an applicable sense of hopefully life-changing awareness is that the spiritual Instagram community and the modern hippie community as an extension of what was going on in the 1990s when Hannah Graff was studying the New Age space is a countercultural movement which is defined by the mainstream movement. 
there's a key word. Within the space, you will hear the word mainstream thrown around like sugar or candy on Halloween. Strange example, but you will hear it thrown around. People who are different define themselves via their difference in relation to that which they are different from. A spiritual movement and someone who's going through a spiritual awakening of one form or another, they know that they are creating a fork in the road moment where they can no longer identify with mainstream consciousness. So they go through the series of wonderful initiations and wonderful diversions at times into the fire circles, into the sister circles, into the sacred cacao. Some people go down the plant medicine route and you know the things, you know the new age space. What happens here is that we create a countercultural fractalization where we go ever, 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 ever deeper into a new identity construct, believing that we have the truth. And this is a really tricky area to talk to, because how does someone who has a visionary experience, or a deep synchronicity, or a powerful premonition in their dream, hold that as true, but also have the awareness that they are being subconsciously influenced by a belief system, which is shaping their perception, and it goes back hundreds of years in terms of different religious structures, and clearly it doesn't fit with mainstream ideas like fundamental Islam or basic Christianity. It has to be something different, something magical, something wonderful, something that is the new age. I don't know where to go with this video in truth at this point. I could go into very specific mentions of how the New Age movement evolved, but I am very much concerned in this instant that I may be getting a bit too ahead of myself. Very few people that I work with even realize that they are within a belief system when it comes to New Age ideology. Myself, when I related to this book, I had these moments, page after page, where I was realizing that my powerful visionary experience or synchronistic event was true and yet was partial. And that certain ideas, especially around things such as channeling or crystals or chakric bodies or astrology or tarot or whatever it might be, need further discernment before they're taken on as a new religion. Just because we don't use the word religion and just because we say we're spiritual but not religious, defined via counter cultural mainstream, not religious in the Christian sense, perhaps in the West doesn't mean that you're not religious in the new age sense and you can see the culty vibes that emerge with even very conscious spiritual communities which have a sense of fragmentation and isolation from the mainstream world which privately behind the scenes they might preach that they're here to try and change and elevate and raise the consciousness of the collective and yet the reality is that you're so splintered off from the collective that you have no idea of what everyday Joe and everyday Sally actually wants from their life because you're so wrapped up in the ideas of the age of Aquarius and the coming dawn of human spirituality. Bit of a rant there, but hopefully the energy is clear. To be someone who's truly integrated in a full spectrum sense, we can have a spirituality which is deep and one flavor or another. You can be a Sufi, you can be a Christian, you can be a Hindu, you can be a new age hippie. But if you don't have the ability to be able to ground that into a physical form which is healthy, to have a healthy lifestyle, to clear out the trauma and relate to the man and the woman on the street with a sense of compassion and a sense of genuine engagement which doesn't require conversion, doesn't require someone to confirm that you have had your angelic visitations and that you have powerful synchronistic dreams, but you can keep it to yourself. You can just have it in your heart as a private belief, that quiet stillness of God, which burns inside of you. That seems like a much healthier, happier, diverse society to be a part of. That's what I try and advocate for anyway. I held up a lot of books at the start of this video. I don't recommend that you read may maybe one book actually. This one book here, The Perspectives on the New Age by James Lewis, it's basically the entry-level version of the main book which I'm holding up. And if you like Wouter Hanegraaff and his style, you might like his other book, which he uh, more explicitly went into esotericism, which is this wonderful hidden intercourse book. See if it comes up there on the uh, 
at that beautiful diagram. There's a lot to go into. There's a whole world of esoteric study. There's a whole world of Gnosticism and Hermeticism and wonderful mystical concepts that you can approach from academic angles and self-interpretive subjective experience. But be careful. Don't get caught up on a roller coaster which you can't get off. Be discerning in your spiritual communities and in your spiritual conversations with friends of where you're just reinforcing a countercultural feeling very much similar to an edgy emo rebellion in your teenage years or something where you just want to define yourself as the opposite, as the, con the contrarian to that which is mainstream. Yes, you can be different. Yes, we can be special. But as the years go by and things like vibes become more and more common and things like soulful, spiritual, everyday spirituality with meditation and with different breathwork practices becomes increasingly more common, just be aware that a new religion is taking hold. There is a belief system which is being formed. It is spiritual but not religious. It's rebelling against scientific materialism. It's looking towards holism. It's looking towards holistic health. It's still a religion. And that's my final point. In the next episode of Inner Work Essentials, we're going to be continuing the religious thread and we're going to go straight towards mysticism so that we can increase your psycho spiritual education and bring forward what I believe to be the single best book on mysticism. I'll see you over there.